Hi, welcome to Studio 14. I'm Jenny Sawyer, and today we're here to talk about some summertime activities, fireworks, which some people love and some people hate. So we're going to get a little bit of the lowdown. With me today, we have from Pooter Fire Authority, Patrick Love, who is Communication Affairs and Education Officer, and Neighborhood Services Manager, Beth Souter. So it's my understanding that starting maybe last year, the city got a pretty large team together to kind of talk about fireworks? Yeah, well there's been over the course of several years a lot of complaints that come into the city about fireworks. And in Fort Collins we have a fireworks ban basically. There's no, in the city of Fort Collins people are not allowed, it's illegal to possess or shoot off any kind of fireworks. And, and that's that, been ongoing? That's like, been ongoing. That's not new. That's not new. Okay. And it can be confusing for people, and a lot of people don't realize it. Um, because we have, out just outside of the city, you'll see fireworks stands and things that are out there, and they're legal in the county. Um, but people don't understand that once you cross the city limit, then you really are not allowed to have them even, or to use them. And that includes even small fireworks, like sparklers and stuff like oh. that. And it has to do with um, safety issues with those, fire concerns, and also um, nuisance type things, you know, the noise and the people afraid that the, so the next door neighbor's fireworks are going to land on their roof and cause their house to burn down or something right. like that. Um, and then just the general, you know, I'm trying to go to sleep and the neighbor keeps shooting off some fireworks and I can't go to sleep. And then, and then the other thing is dog um, and animal issues. A lot of people don't realize that fireworks really scare animals, and some animals to the to the to the point where they bust through a fence or they jump a fence they've never jumped in the past. And so, animal control gets a hot, way high number of dogs at large or dogs getting hit by cars or things like that. You know, terrible things, sad yeah. things happen when that happens. So, so anyway, the city um, decided let's let's see if there's a way that we can better address this this issue for our community. And so we, we put together a kind of cross-agency um, committee that it, it comprises of several city um, departments, including neighborhood services, um, uh, the communications office, the police department, um, and then we have Pooter Fire Authority um, at the table for sure, actually co-chair uh, the committee. Okay. And then we have even county agencies such as uh, the Sheriff's Department, we have State Patrol, um, we even have a property manager um, member uh, from the Association of Property Managers who comes and sits at the table as well. And of course we have animal control. So I've probably forgotten some, but the idea well, is... That's a big team. Yeah, and the idea is to really talk about it cross you know, agency-wise, and what are the issues for all the different agencies all combined? all those folks are impacted by... Exactly. Fireworks. They're all impacted, and at different levels. So, like I said before, you know, the county is concerned at a different level, and there's, there's concern because there is that misunderstanding across, you know, once you step across the Fort Collins line, it's a different rule than when you're in the county, or when you're in Loveland, or when you're in Berthet, or Wellington, or, so there are, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of confusion out there. And then, you know, not that far away to our north, you've got all the, the real big fireworks that are <laughs> legal up there that people go <laughs> up and get, and those are really concerning. Right. So, so a lot of people involved. Well, so, Patrick, what are your thoughts on fire? <laughs> and not your personal thoughts, but what is Pooter Fire Authority's role in this, and what can you share about fireworks? Well, first and foremost, we're concerned about the life safety aspect. And frankly, what it comes down to is if someone is injured or killed, then obviously that's not something that they wanted to do when they're trying to enjoy a holiday. It wasn't in their celebration it, it, That's exactly it. Yeah. And, and we would rather prevent any type of incident like that. And we would like to start with education. Now, uh, Beth briefly mentioned that there, there is some repercussions if you are in the city as far as any possession or use of fireworks. And that repercussion could be up to a thousand dollar fine and also a mandatory court appearance. But okay. again, before we get to that, we would rather educate our customers on, on how to stay safe. One of the best ways to stay safe is go to the professional fireworks shows. There's one in City Park every year, it starts at dusk, and, and it's one of the best shows along the Front Range. Mm -hmm. the, the other part of that, not only along with life safety that we're concerned about, is property conservation. Because does uh, a thousand people within the city limits raise 
the possibility for something, uh, for an incident occurring if they're using fireworks? Absolutely. And we would rather keep that down to low or none, especially within the city. I only smile because um, maybe five or six years ago, like a huge, like 60 foot pine tree right around the corner from me caught on fire on the 4th of July. Right, and, and we, <laughs> Poudre Fire Authority yeah. does respond to those types of fires every single year, whether it's inside the city where fireworks are illegal or outside the city where, again, mm -hmm. fireworks are legal. And however, once you cross a city line, and even though fireworks are legal, the state law says they must not explode or leave the ground. So if they do, then they're still illegal. Ah. So those can actually only be used in Wyoming. And, and that's, again, we're trying to educate our customers. Across the nation, almost 10,000 people are, go to emergency rooms just for fireworks injuries every single year. Wow, that's a lot. That's that's way too many, way too many. Especially and all, with their kids. Absolutely, and, and again, all through the United States, July 4th is the single largest day for fires that are reported. Jeez. And so all, all of those, 50% are normally started from fireworks. That's a big number. So last year, we was bad, right? High Park fire burning. So we had a full on ban and we didn't even do our fireworks show. Um, any idea where we're gonna land this year? Well, right now, uh, the, the decision process uh, is, is a long one. Okay. It, it's not something that's made just with a couple of facts. There are many, many items taken into consideration when bans like that, whether it's local or state, Okay. Are, are put into effect. Uh, things like what is what is our rate of fires right now? What's the weather not only doing now but what is it predicted to do? Mm -hmm. What are the fuel moistures? What's the predicted uh, relative humidity? What's the predicted so we temperature? Have a ways so to go. Ad, absolutely and, there, and a lot can take place between now and, and the 4th of July and so we may get enough moisture that we right. don't have to worry about putting not only fireworks bans in place, but any fire fire bans or burning bans. Right. Oh, and let's get back to that. But first, I just this is confusing because there's so many layers of legalities with fireworks, whether it's state, local, different jurisdictions, whether they leave the ground or explode. Um, so we're doing a lot of education. We're really trying to promote and let people know what is legal and what's not. What, what other kinds of conversations has this committee had or other actions that have come out of it? Well, a lot of it is that education piece. So we really focus and we have a whole timeline and we talk about different ways to get the education out there to people. So we do things like we add a fireworks segment into the education into the elementary schools that Patrick does. Oh, nice. So that the kids are getting it and bringing it home. We also do um, posters you'll see around town and we're gonna start in the next week or two. Um, you'll see them featured on our website. Um, you'll see them around town. We do letters um, to, specific letters to specific areas in town that have traditionally had a higher number of uh, fireworks complaints in the past. Okay, That's Just to good. say, you know, we try not to be um, too heavy handed or make it sound like we're accusing someone of having fireworks, mm -hmm. but just a general, in the past, in your neighborhood, we've had a lot of complaints. So we just want yeah. everyone in your neighborhood to know. And that way we can provide that information and hopefully they help in their decision making process of what they're gonna do. That's and then, and then, then, so our, that's our main thing. Let's prevent it as much as we can. And then when it gets to the few days before and after the 4th of July, and, and including 4th of July, of course, um, we, we, we working on and we, what we do now is a, ver is a uh, partnered enforcement um, process where our police department and Poudre Fire Authority work really closely together and I think they even include some of the CSU police oh, okay. where they work really closely together and partner together, literally go together. Um, to All in the same car, out, mm -hmm. driving around, following up on complaints I assume. Exactly. Okay. And so they have more of a presence, are able to respond immediately to fireworks complaints that are coming in rather than having to work it into all the other things that are going on that time right. of year as well. 
So, and then we also work really closely with the state, with State Patrol and Larimer County Sheriff's Department on that enforcement piece. So when they're out and they see a car, maybe it's in the county, but it's got, they've got a, you know, they just came from Wyoming and they have a bunch of fireworks, they can <laughs> let them know, do you know that in Colorado, you, you know, here's the laws. And if you're going to Fort Collins, here's the laws. So that they can it. provide that extra level. And I think they're even doing some level, it may even be 100%, uh, where they'll confiscate anything that's illegal in the wow. state once they, if they pull, even if they pull them over for speeding. So. It's a definitely a higher level of impact. Enforcement. Yeah. Um, do we confiscate a lot of fireworks around yeah, that we, time? During the year, more so around the time of the 4th of July holiday, but, but during the year we actually confiscate a couple to three dozen uh, pounds or so 36 pounds, pounds of fireworks. Of, wow. That's a lot of fireworks. Yeah. And, and so once, once we uh, confiscate those uh, or, or law enforcement confiscates those, then we uh, destroy of them or we destroy them in, in an appropriate manner. <laughs> Which and isn't at your it, <laughs> pooter fire picnic it, or it, anything? No, <laughs> absolutely not. That, uh, that uh, you know, uh, we, there are some people who would like to see that uh, and, no, and sure they would like to take in part of that uh, using the fireworks, but no, they are, they are destroyed all in mass oh, and, okay. uh, and so, and we do it in a safe manner. The, and, and the other part uh, that, that Beth had mentioned in regards to fireworks complaints, in 2011, and that was the last year that we had uh, some data from a regular or normal year, right. in 2011 there were almost 500 fireworks complaints within a 10-day period uh, surrounding the July 4th holiday. And the issue is, is we both Poudre Fire Authority, but more so the law enforcement, whether it's uh, city police, the sheriff's office, or CSUPD, mm -hmm. respond to those complaints. Main problem is that's taking them away from their regular call load, which doesn't change. As a matter of fact, that raises at during uh, during and around holidays also. Right. So that's taking your resources as a customer and putting them somewhere else. Uh, for actually lower level types of calls, which, which are, are more so nuisance complaints, noise complaints, or uh, somebody uh, can't get sleep or it's bothering their pets. So. so what is the right tact if it's just out of hand in my neighborhood, whether it's actually on the 4th of July or it's the day before or the day after, and it is two in the morning and I, I just can't take it? What should I do? Well, and it is difficult. So that's a good, that's a really good point because a lot of times people don't know exactly where the fireworks are coming from. They just know they can hear them and it sounds like it might be directly behind them, but it may be five blocks behind them or next, you know, to the west or whatever. Yeah. So it, they, they're, it's more difficult as far as reporting, but it's also very important that we have as much information as we can. Because when some, as you can imagine, when someone calls police and says, you know, someone in my neighborhood sh shooting off fireworks, can you please take care of it? They have to go out there, they have to find where it's happening, and they have to have evidence that they've been shooting it off and, and to even approach them and to actually cite them, they, you know, there has to be some um, they have to witness, witness it, huh? yeah, of, the, of them shooting it off. So it's very so difficult. So all that process. litter in the street in front of your house isn't really enough. It's probably enough for them to start a conversation with okay. them and talk about it. Um, as far as taking enforcement action, writing a citation, it, it probably would be much more difficult. You might know better than yeah. me. A absolutely, <laughs> yeah. and, and that, that's a good point because there, there could be a number of people that are just uh, using fireworks anywhere in the street in their neighborhood. So they, it, it may oh, not right, be the person who a, owns or saying. occupies a certain address. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, again, like Beth said, that, that can be a challenge. And so what we need when someone calls uh, the, our communication center is we need them. And let's clarify that too. This probably is not a 911 call unless there's an actual fire. If there's if injury or If it's just fire. a noise nuisance thing, we're calling the non-emergency number. That is correct. And that's okay. a very good distinction because uh, our dispatchers for the city, they're, they're overwhelmed during that time period right. anyway. So, okay. so we suggest call the non-emergency number and only call 911 if it, if it is a true emergency. Again, right. a fire, someone's injured, there's other threat to injury or property, yeah. then, then that would be a good reason to call 911. Okay. So 
then once that person does call 911, or I'm sorry, 911 <laughs> or the non emergency number. Again, Which let's on. give it to folks. Yeah, it's 221 um, uh, 6540. That's two, what two, I was going to say. 6540. Yep. Okay. And what that person needs to tell the call taker is that not only an exact address if possible, but they also need to give them a description of what's going on and whether they're willing to speak with law enforcement once law enforcement arrives. So not an anonymous call, but actually leave their contact info or me. Like they could call me back if they're in the area and like, we're sorry we're here, but we're not hearing anything or are we in the right place kind of thing. Correct. Okay. Because again, like Beth had mentioned, it's, it's, it can be very challenging to to track down calls like that. And most of the time, the, uh, the responders are so busy, it may be 30, 60, 90 minutes plus uh, okay. before, before they're able to get into the area. And by that time, the folks who were using the fireworks, they're normally done and gone. Right. Which again, that's another important reason why we're really focusing a lot of our efforts on the education piece. So people are at least aware and hopefully not doing it. And it's lowering those, the number of times that that's happening. Right. But at, because too, we know that enforcement can be so tricky. And even though we're increasing our efforts in enforcement, so hopefully we can catch the ones that are happening, um, it's still a difficult process. So. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because last year was sort of an anomaly. So it's hard to compare if it, how much of an impact we're having since there was such an overall ban, but. Right, yeah, needless to say, the data for last year was much lower mm -hmm. than in past. Um, and I'm sure that the fire. I noticed it, I'll be honest, in my neighborhood, like yeah. far fewer. Yeah. Ab absolutely, and, mm -hmm. and that's something that we hope to get to in the future where we're, we're dealing less and less with these issues. And, and again, more so through education. We yep. will go to enforcement if we have to, but we prefer not to. Right. Wow, well, good work on the fireworks and all. We had started talking a little bit, and I wanted to come back to it, about all-out fire bans, um, which includes, and we see a lot of this in the summertime, but sort of the, the backyard, whether it's a fire pit, whether it's a chimney, whether it's a fire pan, whether, you know, whatever those things are. Um, those are actually legal, correct? They are legal. And now, to make that distinction, uh, they need to be a properly built and maintained fire pit or chimney, and preferably with some type of spark arrestor over the top. So, okay. in, in chimneys normally come with a with a mesh screen to put over the top. Okay. That that's best. Now, now when people are using those, they need to not use them within ten feet of any combustible surface. So it could be a wood deck that they're putting the, putting that on. It could be that their residence has wood siding, a wood fence or even just vegetation in, in the back of their yard. Okay. So they need to be very cognizant of that. The other thing that they need to do is use clean fuel. So in other words, we do not allow trash. We do not allow uh, uh, leaves or yard debris or yard waste to go in there. Construction waste. Construction waste. We, we don't allow that. And, and that's mostly because of the smoke concerns. Mm -hmm. And so the other part of that is when you are using an appliance like that, you need to be present at all times. It, it's like cooking. You, we recommend you stay in the kitchen <laughs> when you're cooking. So Seems you obvious. So you a cooking fire. <laughs> right. This is the same thing. A, as we know, weather in Colorado can change on a dime and a wind can come up or it, it even just a normal convection current from the fire can send a spark somewhere where it has a receptible fuel bed and then we have a fire. So that's the, the safety side. With fire comes smoke and we are in a pretty compact urban environment. So. Beth, do you want to talk a little bit about sort of how Neighborhood Services approaches those outdoor fires? Well, we do hear from folks who, you know, and for a lot of different reasons. It could be just a nuisance. It could be a health issue for someone, you know, that this, any kind of smoke 
any level really of smoke and sometimes a lot of smoke comes off of these yeah. can start an asthma attack and really affect their health in a negative way and so we do hear concerns and even when they're legal um, these concerns come in and so we typically will help work with people as far as again the education approach so if it's in a particular neighborhood if we know the exact address we can do a directed letter there explaining what the rules are the codes that are in place and even the nuisance concerns the health concerns that are out there so that they at least know and are aware of of why it, it's good to do these things and then um, if they don't know the exact address we can do a general neighborhood letter mm -hmm. again just providing that information and letting people know the concerns with it so most people don't consciously want to bother their neighbor exactly. like if you're doing something and in, in it's hard to do it if you knowingly know that it's really bothersome for someone Absolutely. I think a little of that probably gets lost on the 4th of July because you think it's one night and this is what it's all about but hopefully we are raising an awareness level around those nuisance issues. Again, health and safety always first, but yeah. Yep. Um, I know we've gotten some calls before too about barbecues, and particularly in a multifamily kind of unit. So what's the story on the barbecues on patio, like, you know, the decks? Right, barbecues uh, are regulated through the International Fire Code and we have adopted that and so the regulations under that code state that they cannot be used above the ground floor and okay. and and let me make be very specific on this mm -hmm. or unless it is a sprinklered balcony so a fire sprinkler because the regulations also state that any barbecue must be at least 10 feet away from any combustible surface. So that's it, it, not going to happen on a mini patio. That that's exactly <laughs> okay. It. And and so that's why again any barbecue above the ground floor has or, or is not allowed uh, unless it is fire sprinklered the entire building and also the balcony. So the other part about that is that we do. Uh, experience fires from barbecues and a lot of times in multifamily units okay. every single year. Wow. So this again is something we would rather educate our customers about instead of having to respond when when we have an apartment building on fire because how many people does that displace? Normally a lot yeah. and and so we would rather uh, prevent something like that. Now, the other part of that is, and, and we get calls on this all the time, mm -hmm. it, it, it will differ if it is an owner-occupied uh, residence. So where that distinction comes in is if, if it is a multifamily, then that owner-occupied residence is uh, seen a little differently in the code and normally those are like condominiums Con yeah, town home and, it, in townhomes okay. so so there is uh, again a line in between there and normally those will be two-story units and the owner or occupant can get that barbecue out and away from the building is there any difference or preference safety wise between a charcoal or a gas grill no. You know, I, I, I think it's more of a preference thing. Yes, okay. they both types of so fuels are, are safe if they're used according to manufacturer recommendations. Okay. And so it, it all depends. Now, it's, it's like anything, those uh, appliances need to be kept maintained. So if you have a propane gas fired grill, then you need to make sure that the hoses don't have any leaks in them, the tank was attached properly, and also your valves are turned completely off when you're done using the unit. Okay, so these are just good like summertime reminders mm -hmm. as we get into these activities. Um, anything else on summertime safety or nuisances that we see more in the summer than other times? Um, well, I, I would just want to add, I know I mentioned already, but I know animal control and Bill would like me to say that yeah. to remember those pets with all of these things and in the summer with the heat, remember the pets being outside, make sure they have shelter, make sure they have water and don't leave them in your car right. when it's so hot. And also with the fireworks, that it's really hard on the pets. That's true. I've, uh, my aunt puts her dog in the car and like leaves her house 
over Fourth of July. Like, mm. poor doggy just can't take it. Yeah, understandable. I'm getting to be a little like that. <laughs> 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 no, I shouldn't say that. I want to thank you both, one, as team chairs on this team for really tackling fireworks, which is a challenging issue. And um, people out there, be on the look for those posters. I've seen a few of them. They're kind of catchy and clever and really help spread the word. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you all for joining us. And please take these nuggets of info and spread the word.